on the Holy Spirit's gifts, the Holy Spirit's fruit into what she's putting her hands into. And it's a joy to have you, Pastor Sheila, this morning. Birth today, what God has given you to birth in our midst. Put your hands as you receive her. Well, I thought it was just my throat, but I know I sound like a man probably now. <laughs> I've had a really bad throat and just not feeling well, um, but I'm glad to be here. I've heard so much about you from Pastor Gavin and Pastor Amenla and uh, from my husband, Peter. And so I'm really excited to be here. I bring greetings from Toronto Church on the Rock that my husband and I pastor. And Pastor Gavin has been there with us and we've had an amazing breakthrough time uh, with the message that uh, Pastor brought to our congregation. It was a word in season for us. And there was a shift that happened. Um, so I know you're contending for Bangalore. I stand here representing Toronto and we are contending for Canada and Toronto, which is really, it sounds, fancy, it sounds good, but Toronto is, and Canada is a very dry place spiritually. So it's really hard for us to minister there. But we also know that God is doing something. We have a word from the Lord. Yes. And as long as we have a word, that's good enough. Amen? Yes. And I know with regards to this church, I was sitting here and enjoying the worship and the service. And I really felt like, you know, in Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, it refers to a hovering of the spirit. It says that the earth was formless and void Darkness was over the surface of the deep, but the Spirit of God was hovering or brooding, other versions say, over the chaos and over the formlessness and over the void. And so I want to prophesy to you that in this church where there are areas of void, areas of darkness, areas of formlessness, that the Spirit of God is very much active, hovering and brooding over that to birth the purposes of God. And as, as you continue and contend and not let go, and you speak forth the decree of the Lord, because when the word of God came and said, let there be, and I prophesy over the apostle in the house and the pastors and the leaders that there is going to be a let there be anointing, that you are going to hear the word of the Lord and you're going to prophesy and say, let there be. And it shall happen in Jesus' name because the Spirit of God is hovering over this church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, are you ready for the Word of God today? I'm hoping to bring to you something which I, uh, as I was asking the Lord, um, what, what is the word that I should bring? I really felt like God said that you guys have been fed with meat very often. You're not babes. You don't need milk. So if you're a note taker, you definitely want your paper and your pen. And I know I'm a preacher and I, I get carried away sometimes in the preaching, but I think I want to do a little bit of teaching today. Because God is doing something all across the earth and we are carriers of his glory. It is not God's will that you come Sunday after Sunday and listen to a word and go back and wait for the next Sunday to come up to church for another good word. So I believe it is God's will for me to bring this word to you today. So I'm encouraging you, especially the young people, that does not discount the older ones. And, and as God brings this message, I wanted you to take it more than just a word for a Sunday morning. I hope and pray that this will become a reality in your life. So, Father, we pray, speak your word, O Lord. Transform us, O God. Take us beyond the ordinary, the natural, the mundane, and, and the regular. And, Lord, let us become. Let the word become flesh in us as we hear it today. Come, Holy Spirit. Speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I want you to turn with me to Genesis chapter 28. And the reference is uh, verses 10 onwards, 10 to 19. This is a familiar passage which um, when Jacob was running from 
his brother Esau. And um, he's going to Laban's house, but on the way, he has an encounter. So Genesis chapter 28, verses 10 to 19. For the sake of time, I'm going to skip some of the verses uh, just to give you the reference. It starts from 10. So this is the place where Jacob is running from his brother. You know the story, right? He cheated his brother. Uh, yes, no? Yes. Thank you. It encourages me when you nod or when you say yes or amen. So Jacob is running from his brother. And then he, you know, in the night he finds a place to rest his head. He puts a stone. I always wondered how did he feel comfortable with a stone, but never mind. He finds a stone, he rests his head there, and then he has a dream or a vision, right? And in the vision, he sees a stairway that connects heaven and earth. And on top of the stairway, he sees the Lord. And God repeats to him the covenant that he had made with his father, Abraham. And he says, you know, I'll be with you wherever you go and all of that. So I'm fast forwarding the story. So I want you to now, in that context, I want you to hear part of what Jacob said in response to that revelation. So let's look at verses 16 and 17. I'm going to read that. Verse 16 says, When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. He was afraid and said, How awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. So first of all, he makes a statement. He says, surely God is in this place and I was not aware of it. And I wonder how, how many times we go through situations and it's really a bad situation. And, you know, we have afterthought saying, ah, God was actually so close to me. He was with me, but I just wasn't aware of it. So maybe some of you are in that situation, but that's not where I'm going with the story today. But if you are in that situation of being in a difficult place, just remember that God is with you. Maybe five years down the road, ten years down the road, you will look at today and say, hey, God was really with me, but I wasn't aware of it. So it's better switch your mind and get aware that God is still with you in that difficulty. Hallelujah. But, but let's move on. He says, God was in this place. And then he says about that dream and about the revelation, he says, this is none other than the house of God and it is the gate of heaven. Let's read that verse 17 again. It says, he said, how awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. So I want you to make the connection. He said, this is the house of God and this is the gate of heaven. So in other words, what he was saying was the house of God is the gate of heaven. So I want you to notice that this was the first time in the Bible, in the word of God, that the reference to house of God was being made. This was the first time and every time in the scriptures when there's a reference to anything for the first time, it's significant. I want you to catch it. Before that, you never hear the, word, the phrase house of God. So he, he makes a declaration, he gets a revelation and he says, the, this is the house of God. So he wasn't referring to that local geographical area. He was saying this, the revelation that he had was the house of God and it is the gate of heaven. So I want you to think of what was the revelation he had when he said this is the house of God. It was open heavens. Remember we pray about open heavens. It was open heavens. It was a ladder that connected heaven and earth and there was angelic or supernatural activity happening because angels were going up and down. I'm assuming coming down, receiving prayers, and taking the prayers back up to God, or however, because angels are ministering spirits sent to minister to those who would inherit salvation. But the point is, when he referred to the house of God, when he said, this is the house of God, he had a certain picture in mind. The revelation of the house of God was open heavens, connecting heaven to earth, and supernatural activity. Got it? That was, the, that was his definition or the first definition of the house of God. And then he goes one step further and by revelation he says, the house of God is the gate of heaven. Now I want to ask you, what does gate mean? Gates can be open or it can be shut. Gates are access points. And we know in the Old Testament, gates were where the elders sat to make decisions. So important decision. So it's a place of authority. It is a place of entrance or exit. 
So I want you to get that much. Okay, gates can be open shut. So keep, keep track with me that the house of God, which is open heavens, connecting heaven to earth, is actually the gate of heaven. All right? Okay, I want you to go now to John chapter 1 and the last two verses, 49 and 50. And 51 actually. So this was, again, while you're finding the um, scripture, I can tell you the background. Philip had brought Nathaniel to the Lord and Jesus looked at Nathaniel and said, Here is a man in whom there is no guile. And Nathaniel was so impressed with the word of knowledge that Jesus had. He said, surely you are, you know, and l let's go there. So what, what did Jesus say? Jesus, um, John chapter 1, okay, and um, Nathaniel declared, Rabbi, you are the son of God, you are the king of Israel. This is verse 49 in John chapter 1. And in verse 50, Jesus said, you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You will see greater things than that. And verse 51, he then added, very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. So in other words, Jesus was declaring to Nathaniel that, listen, you just got a revelation about who I am, but I'm telling you, you'll see something and it'll be angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man, referring to himself. In other words, he was saying that he was the ladder that connects heaven and earth. The same ladder of Jacob that Jacob saw, the ladder which connected heaven to earth, the ladder upon which angels of God were ascending and descending. Which was, and Jesus say, was saying, I am that ladder. In other words, he was saying, I connect heaven and earth. I am the supernatural. I am the open heavens. I am the connector between heaven and earth. So he made that declaration. Now stay with me on the fact that he said, when, when Jacob had the revelation, he said, this is the house of God, it's the gate of heaven, right? And the de definition for the house of God was connecting heaven to earth, open heavens and all of that. Now I want you to look at something. In John chapter 10 verse 9, it's a longer verse, but the gist of it is, Jesus says, I am the gate. He said, I am the gate. And we know, if you don't have to go there, but Ephesians 1.10 and Ephesians, I mean, Colossians 1.20 all talk about how Jesus is reconciling the world to himself. So in other words, I'm trying to say is that Jesus declared that he was the gate that means people come in and go to heaven. John 14, 6, he said, no one can come to the Father except by me. So we are establishing here that Jesus was the gate of heaven, that Jesus was the ladder that Jacob had the revelation about. He was the ladder that connects heaven and earth, that people can go access heaven through. So he was the ladder and the gate. Now, you remember that scripture where in John chapter 2, the Pharisees come to Jesus and say, prove now that you are sent from God, right? And then Jesus says, it's a very weird answer he gives. He says, destroy this temple and I'll build it. I'll raise it up in three days. Go, go with me there. John chapter 2, verses 28, uh, sorry, 18 to 21. The Jews then responded to him, what sign can you show to prove your authority? Jesus answered, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. They replied, it has taken 46 years to build this temple and you are going to raise it in three days? In other words, they were saying, are you crazy? Because he was standing by the temple. So they thought he's referring to the, the physical temple. But look at what verse 21 says. But the temple he had spoken of was his body. The temple that he had spoken of was his body. So, you know, we are just interchanging words. House of God or temple of God is the same thing. So now you see that Jesus was the temple or the house of God. He was the gate of heaven. 
He was the ladder that connected heaven to earth. So everything that Jacob saw in his revelation of the house of God was fulfilled in Jesus. So in other words, you can look at Jesus and say, this is none other but the house of God and it is the gate of heaven. Amen. Now it just keeps getting better. I want you to look at um, second, sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. It's a familiar passage. It talks about, Paul is asking the church, don't you know that you are the temple of the living God, the Holy Spirit? He was talking to the believers. He was talking to the believers and in this context, he was talking about collectively being the temple together in 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. But also in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, if you go to verse 19, he says, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit, referring to the individual. So I want you to get this. Old Testament, Jacob has a revelation. Then in the New Testament, Jesus brings the revelation that he's the gate, he's the house of God, and he's the ladder that connects heaven and earth. And then fast forward to the New Testament, Paul is telling the believers collectively, you are the temple, God's spirit dwells in you. And then he also emphasizes to the individual that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So in other words, in other words, I hope you're getting this church, each one of us individually are the house of God. And collectively together, we are the house of God. And Jacob declared in Genesis chapter 28 verse 17 that the house of God is the gate of heaven. Are you getting it? So you can look at yourself and say, I am the house of God because we are the temple. And you can tell that I am the gate of heaven. So now you, you wonder, okay, so if I'm the gate and if I am the temple, that means the open heavens exist on me, with me, in me. That means we are the ladder that connects heaven to earth. You know that in 2 Corinthians it says that we are ministers of reconciliation. That God reconciled us to himself. But after that he says, now I'm giving you the ministry of reconciliation. You know, everything that Jesus was, he kind of passes the... Passes the baton on to us. Can I have my water please with the honey? He passes the baton on to, on to us. For example, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And then he turns around to the believers and says, now you are the light of the world. He was the salt. He turns around and says, now you are the salt of the world. He says, I came to represent the father. Now he turns and says, now you represent the father. He says, God sent me. And then he turns around and says, says, just as my father sent me, I send you out. Yes. Yes. So we are involved in this thing together. We represent Jesus. Amen. So we need to get that mindset that everything that Jesus was, he has given to us. Amen. So backtrack, Jesus was the temple. And then he was the house of God. He was the gate of heaven. And now we are the temple. We are the house of God. We are the gate of heaven. Now may I ask you, if we shut the doors, if we as the gate keep the door shut, gate is the access point. That's the place where people, if we are the gate of heaven, people come in. People come in. It's an access point. Obviously, we, are not, we don't offer our own salvation. You realize that. We are representatives. We are ambassadors. But we are the gate through which the righteous may enter in. Through which the people may enter in. That is a huge revelation. Until we catch that, we will always be waiting for someone else to give the blessing. We will always be waiting for something else to happen to me. We will be waiting with that posture of receiving, saying, I need to receive. But when you get that God has made you the ladder, the supernatural, that God has made you the gate, God has made you the door, God has made you the house of God, things will shift. Now it just keeps getting better. I want you to look at... Um, Exodus chapter 40 verses 34 and 35. Because I want you to see that what happened with the temple. Let's look at the prototype 
in the Old Testament. So the first time the house of God was built, we, we refer to it as the tabernacle of Moses. That was the first time that anyone attempted building something for God and it was a house of God. They called it the tabernacle. So if you look at the end of Exodus 40, it says, for the sake of time, I'm going to summarize. It says that after everything was set in place, what happened? It says that the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Did you get that? Did you get that verse? So once the temple was completed, the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Hallelujah. It says Moses could not even enter in because the cloud was so thick. The glory was so thick. Can you imagine not being able to enter because the, the glory was so thick? Then let's fast forward to 1 Kings chapter 8, verses 10 and 11. I'm sure the worship team would love this. It's also made mention in 2 Chronicles chapter 5. So in 1 Kings chapter 8, maybe I should go there. 1 Kings chapter 8, verses 10 and 11. This is after Solomon built the temple. And then Solomon dedicates this and prays in verse 10 says, When the priests withdrew from the holy place, the cloud filled the temple of the Lord, and the priests could not perform their service because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the temple. So now, many years after the tabernacle of Moses, Solomon builds a grand temple for the Lord. And it says when he had completed making the temple, and then they were dedicating it, the glory of the Lord filled that temple, or the house of God, and they could not enter it. Let's fast forward more. You remember um, Luke, in, in Luke chapter 9, everybody knows this scripture where Jesus went up the mountain with Peter, James, and John. And he wanted to pray and then that whole story where they couldn't uh, stay awake. But there comes a point where suddenly they see that Jesus' face was completely transformed. And he looked, you know, his, his clothes were shining. And we call it the Mount of Transfiguration. And it says the cloud, they entered the cloud, there was a cloud of glory. So while Jesus was on earth in the Mount of Transfiguration, he or the temple of God was filled again with the Spirit of God and the cloud of glory. Now I hope you are tracking to see where I am going with this. The temple was always meant to be filled with the glory of God. It happened in the tabernacle of Moses. It happened in the, in the temple of Solomon. It happened, actually you'll see that in um, Ezekiel chapter 43, it refers to the temple, the new temple that is yet to come in the future. And even that is going to be filled with the glory of God. Now Jesus as the temple was filled with the glory of God. Now, here's the best part. Colossians chapter 1 verses 26 to 28. I'm sure you know this, but now it, it, it can come in a new understanding. Colossians chapter 1, verses 26 and 28 to 28. The mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed or made known to the Lord's people. To them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Let's start with that. Verse 27 of Colossians chapter 1. It's Christ in you. There was a mystery that God had kept hidden for generations and for ages. And what does he say? What was that mystery? He says that mystery is that Christ, the glory of God, will become in us. And so it becomes Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now who are you? Tell me again. Who are you? you who are, don't tell me your names, please. <laughs> who are you? You are the temple. You are the gate. You are the door. And, so it, and you're the house of God. And so throughout the scriptures you see that God's intention was that the house of God be filled to overflowing with the glory of God. He did it with all the 
earthly temples then he did it with Jesus who declared himself to be the house of God and then he said now you are the temple of God and then he says Christ in you the hope of glory so God's glory the temple was always meant to be filled with the glory of God period there is no if ands or buts about it we the house of God are meant to be filled with the glory of God hallelujah now I want you to see something Turn with me to Ezekiel chapter 47. And we'll look at verse 1 and 2 first. Okay, so Ezekiel chapter 47. Ezekiel is getting this uh, experience or vision about the temple. And he says, the man or the angel, the man brought me back to the entrance of the temple. Everybody say entrance of the temple. And then he says, and I saw water coming out from under the threshold of the temple. The water was coming down from under the south side of the temple. Where was the water coming from? It says the water was coming from the temple, but it was coming from under the threshold. Under, from inside the temple, there was water coming out. All right? And, and then it says it was just a trickle. So if you look at verse 2. The latter part of verse 2 says, and the water was trickling from the south side. The water was just trickling from the temple. Now I want you to go fast forward to John chapter 7. And then we'll come back to Ezekiel. Look at John chapter 7. Verse 38 and 39. Well, we can even go a little further, but John chapter 7. Verses 38 and 39. All right, let me read. Let me read from verse 37. On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood up and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. Verse 39. By this, he meant the spirit whom those who believe in him were later to receive. So Jesus makes a declaration, whoever believes in me, out of his bellies, out of his innermost being, rivers of living water will flow out. And then the writer clarifies it for us by saying, by this he meant the spirit. Lest you mistake that there's some kind of leakage of water out of our bellies. Or some saliva coming out of our mouth. He said he referred, he was making reference to the spirit of God flowing out of our bellies, out of our innermost beings. So now get the picture. Who are you? The temple, the house of God, the gate of heaven. And then Jesus said that out of your bellies, out of the temple, out of the innermost parts of the temple, that there will be a river. The Spirit of God will flow out and the comparison is like a river. Yes. Not just trickle, but a river will flow out. Now let's go back up to Ezekiel 47. Back up to Ezekiel 47 because I want you to get this picture embedded in your mind. Ezekiel 47 Let's look at, we saw that in verse 2 it said, the water was just trickling. Okay, it starts with a trickle. And then in verse 3 it says, the water came ankle deep. If you can, just reach over and touch your ankle. Say, ankle deep. So this is a picture from the temple. From inside the temple there was a water flowing and it was trickling. And then Ezekiel goes and then he says it was ankle deep. Just a little bit. The trickle gathered enough for ankle deep. And then you look at it. Let's go to next verse. Verse 4 says he measured off another thousand cubits. It was knee deep. Everybody touch your knees if you can. And say knee deep. He measured off another and then now it was waist deep. Up to the waist. So what, what is the picture? The trickle is becoming greater and more. It's becoming ankle deep, knee deep, and waist deep. Hallelujah. And then it goes on to say in verse 7. Now let's go to verse 5. He measured off 
another thousand but but now it was a river that i could not cross because the water had risen and was deep enough to swim in a river that no one could cross that's verse 5 and i want to pause here for a minute i want you to compare yourself this was a picture of the temple that was yet to come which is you and i we are the temple of god and the spirit of god flows out of us just like how this picture was it starts as a trickle because jesus said in john john chapter 7 that out of your bellies all you need to do is just believe in me you didn't have to do this and that and climb this mountain or fast for 80 days or whatever it is he said just by virtue of believing in jesus for everyone who believes in me he says there is a river out of your bellies will flow the river so i want you to picture yourself as a house of god i want you to know that you are the gate the access point for the world that they can connect with heaven you are the ladder the connecting point that connects earth to heaven you god has given you the ability you are the light you are the salt and now god wants you to get this picture there is dammed up and locked up within your belly a great and mighty river it may just start off as a little trickle but if you let that trickle flow that trickle becomes ankle deep then it becomes knee deep then it becomes waist deep and as you keep going it says it was a great river that no one could cross hallelujah won't we love to just float in that river let the river take us hallelujah but here's the good thing the river is not just for us to enjoy although we get the refreshing the river is for others because this is a life giving flow it is a life giving spirit hallelujah okay so i want you to look at something here so ezekiel 47 verse let's look at verse 7 when i arrived i saw a great number of trees on each side of the river he said to me this water flows towards the eastern region and goes down into the araba where it enters the dead sea when it enters into the sea the salty water there becomes fresh come on hallelujah it says this river was flowing and there were trees popping up on both sides of the river come on hallelujah it was watering things and then it says it flows down to the araba which actually is a desert land so this river goes into the desert land produces trees and life and then it says it goes to the dead sea you understand dead sea everything there is dead it says when this river touches or enters the dead sea hallelujah everything in it starts to live how glorious is that how glorious is that and so think of the river of the spirit of god coming out of you it touches things and everything that it touches starts living hallelujah You know I was thinking the other day Old Testament laws are different where we can't touch the the unclean things and we can't touch um go to a certain place and then that defiles you that makes you bad that you know like for example if you touched a leper then you become defiled that was the old testament law but with jesus there's a new shift because he carried the spirit of god it says when you touch the leper the leper gets healed the leper gets healed you don't become defiled so you walk into those places of darkness in the city and in the nation and you don't have to be afraid that oh they will shoot me or i will change or that something will happen we will get defiled you walk in and you change the atmosphere hallelujah that's because of the spirit of god within us because you need to remember ezekiel 47 says wherever the river flows there is life wherever it goes there is life we can walk into drug infested areas we can walk into places of hopelessness and hope will spring up life will spring up this river can go into the dead areas into the dead sea and life can spring up hallelujah that is the river that we carry church of god house of god hallelujah i want you to look this more it says in verse 9 swarms of living creatures will live wherever the river flows there will be large numbers of fish come on hallelujah we know what fish represents jesus said i will make you 
we'll catch a whole lot of fish and here it says there will be large number of fish because this water flows there where to the dead sea to the araba to the desert and to the dead sea and makes the salt water fresh so that where the river flows everything will live look at verse 9 again wherever the river flows everything will live not just one or two things not just a few testimonies not just a little bit but everything will live listen god is calling us to be people who will contend for everything that we will not settle with a little bit of transformation we will not settle with a little bit of things a few miracles no god says go for the gold go for all go for everything hallelujah hallelujah wherever this river flows everything will live the dead fish will come to life hallelujah church i want to i want to close with this i want you to realize what it is that you carry the days of sitting and waiting for someone else to bless us is over it is over there's revelation now that you are the house of god that you are the temple you are the one who carries the spirit of god that flows like a river because jesus said out of your bellies out of your bellies not out of the other person's bellies now think of the collective bellies hallelujah everybody put your hand on your on your belly come on let's stand let's stand let's stand for a minute hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus i want to take you back to the revelation of jacob jacob's ladder the ladder that connects earth to heaven that supernatural activities happen the open heavens that is the gate of heaven and the house of god so as a house of god you have the authority to bring down supernatural experience to earth you have the authority to enable people to have open heaven access what does open heaven mean it means where things are brassy where things are hard where there's resistance you have breakthrough you have angelic activity you have life hallelujah So I declare to you that you are the ladder of Jacob that you are the gate of heaven so open up the gates come on Psalm 24 I believe it is verse 7 that says open up the gates and let the king of glory come in come on don't leave it shut don't have it rusted don't shut and lock the doors open up in the name of Jesus lift up your heads all ye gates hallelujah lift up your heads all ye gates and let the king of glory come in and let the river flow let it flow from the temple from within the temple let it go into the desert places into the dry places into the dead sea and let it become bring life hallelujah glory to jesus glory to jesus hallelujah would you just start praying in tongues say god release the river release the river come on put one hand on your belly prophesy over yourself prophesy over yourself because you hold the key you hold the key prophesy and say flow river flow flow river flow spring up oh well flow out of me start as a trickle go forth as a mighty river hallelujah khorama shekheri andara basoko rebe be 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 rindara masto rava shekheri andara maseke rebe seke come on release the river release the river release the river it is within you it is within you house of god it is within you o gate of heaven hallelujah ko raba baba sendere be kheria next time you meet someone who's sick come on lay those hands on the person lay hands on the sick because of the confidence that jesus said my river will flow from you come on ko rama seke don't just pray for headaches pray for cancer don't just pray for a good job pray for cities to be transformed don't just pray for a good thing hallelujah don't just pray for a job or a house pray for the nation pray for nations of the world you have it within you don't sit on your inheritance let it flow let it flow let it flow hallelujah ko re me se ke thara ba 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 se ke hallelujah 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 you can reach it today you can release it you can release it unlock those gates 
open up open up open up be lifted up you heavenly gates be lifted up you heavenly gates let the king of glory come out hallelujah thank you jesus i just want to give us a few words that i feel like god has given us i'm just going to probably call a few groups of people i felt like the lord was saying that there is a shift happening for some people this is not for everybody i just feel there's a group of people that or maybe just an individual or two i feel like there's a shift happening where in first kings chapter 17 verse 3 Elijah had received the word of the Lord and said go hide yourself in the brook. And and so there was a period of hiddenness in your life but in in 1 Kings 18 verse 1 the word of the Lord came to him and said go show yourself to the king. And I feel like the spirit of God is saying you've been in a season of hiddenness, hiddenness and God is bringing you out of the season of hiddenness to stand before kings, to stand before influential people. and you may have been wondering why you've been going through stuff see elijah had heard the word of the lord and in obedience he went and he hid himself in the brook but the brook dried and the raven stopped coming then came the widow and all of those it kept going from then the widow's son died it kept going from bad to worse i feel like god is saying that things have gone from bad to worse but you've walked in obedience and you've been in that place of hiddenness where maybe you've not been recognized for your faithfulness or maybe you feel what is going on with me other people are getting blessed but no one seems to notice god do you know that i even exist you've been in that place of hiddenness god is saying the season is here that you're going to come out out of the hiddenness in to stand before places of influence if you are that person or that group of people i want you to come up in front I'm going to just call up the groups of people if you if you um relate to that I want you to come running up and and come for prayer. Hallelujah. I also feel uh, just stay and, and I'll pray for you. I believe there are more than one or two here but that's okay. Um and if it's not for you please do not come up. Don't just come up for a word. If if you feel you've been in a season of hiddenness and you've been struggling and suffering in spite of having walked in obedience god is changing that season i also feel that there's some intercessors here who are, who are like the priests who carried the the ark into the jordan river and if you know the story they were holding the ark and then many people the whole tribe of israel they they walked through jordan and crossed over to the other side but the priests were first to enter in and they were the last to get out and i feel like god is saying there are some intercessors here who have actually prayed through and seen some broken ground they help break open some things but it looks like nothing's been going good for them it looks like all the other people have passed by you've prayed for people and they've entered their promised land but you are still standing there with the ark of god watching others pass by watching others get promotion watching others get the breakthrough watching others come into what you yourself has needed and and god says you've been a faithful servant i want you to come up as i as i tell if if you relate to that i want you to come up god says that you've been faithful and he's going to reward your faithfulness but i feel like it's not yet it's not just yet a little bit longer a little more if you can just hold on god says your season is coming hallelujah hallelujah i also i also saw a balance like a weighing balance and i see it tipped to to a side and i feel there's been injustice I don't know if you're fighting a court battle or if you are dealing with a situation where extreme injustice has been happening. Things are not going fair and so the balance is tipped. I see I see that balance. I hope you understand what I'm talking about like two scales. Scale is tipped on one side. 
and I see it shifting and I see it coming to the right balance. And I feel like God is saying that, that that injustice that you've been struggling for a long time, I don't know whether it's a court case or whether it's, whether it's family property issues with that or something to do with property, but I feel like God is saying balance is coming. You are going to get justice because the judge is on the throne. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I also feel that there are some young people here who have who have who are feeling confinement or you've got prophetic words you have the desire of God in your heart and yet there has been situations where you try something and that door is closed and you try something else and that door is closed and you're trying something else and that door is closed I feel it's also with business maybe you've been trying this and just the doors are closing I feel like God is saying that you are like Joseph. You have a call of like Joseph, similar calling upon your life where you will be called to bless many people. But in Genesis chapter, uh, chapter 49, I believe it's verse 21 or 22. It says that Joseph is like a fruitful vine that climbed over the walls. And I prophesy to you, come up here if you're there. But I prophesy to you that though the enemy may build walls around you, that even if there are things that limit you and restrict you, the Spirit of God is saying the word of God over your life that has come to you in the past will never fail. That God is giving you, He's not removing the walls, He's not removing the restrictions, He is causing you to climb over the wall and go out and beyond. Break over the limitations in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel also that over this church, God is saying that it's not just restoration. You have called for restoration. But God is saying that you are going to move into that place of reformation where you will not just restore the brokenhearted, but also that you will bring through that a reformation, a change that will last, that will influence society. And that call for reformation is here. And pastor, I feel that wherever... I, I see teams, I actually see teams going, not just coming into church here, but I, I see teams going, not just in Bangalore and to other parts of the nation, but I see teams going overseas. I see lines of flight, you know, like flightways like you see in the map. I see that there'll be teams, apostolic teams, apostolic prophetic teams that will go out and minister. They will not just receive, they'll be going for receiving, and forgiving and I see those teams coming hallelujah I also feel pastor that there are some people who used to be part of this church way back and and I feel I see a return a return of some of those people and and a great return of of some of the youth hallelujah God is going to do a work in their hearts and they are going to come hallelujah if you have gone through some extraordinary trials, hear me straight. We all go through trials and problems. I'm not talking about that. If you have gone through one trial after another, you can't keep your head above water. When you just overcome one thing, you're going to have something, you have had something else coming up. If you've had one trial after the other, I want you to either raise your hand or come up in front. I have a word of the Lord for you. If you've just been going one thing after the other, one thing after the other. Hallelujah. Here's the word of the Lord. I feel like God is saying, this is just specifically for you who, who's been going through this extreme trial. I feel like in, in, in Daniel chapter 7, I think it is. It says that uh, verse 21, 22, somewhere there. It says that the horn was waging war against the saints of God. The horn which is representing the demonic, the antichrist. It was waging war against the saints of God. And it looked like the saints were being defeated. The next verse says, Until the Ancient of Days came and took his stand. Books were open. I declare to you that the Ancient of Days is walking into your situation. That he will judge the situation. That the, that the horn seems to be waging war and winning. But he is not the final winner. The spirit of the overcomer is upon you. And you will overcome. You will overcome. I prophesy to you. As surely as the Lord lives. You will overcome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask Steve and Brittany. And, and Pastor Shanae. If you guys are there. I want you to come, come, come up. And Steve even as you're coming up. I just see in my spirit.
Steve, that you are a bulldozer in the spirit. And I want to prophesy to you the bulldozer anointing that you'll clear through forests and you'll clear through thick grounds. You'll break up unplowed ground and you will go. Some people won't even like that attitude. But God says, I have put that bulldozer anointing upon you and you will go with that anointing, the anointing of the Lord and you will break open some things over people and over regions. And God says, I have set my hand upon you to bring the dry bones to life. That dry bones, the valleys of dry bones will become army. Don't take it lightly for I've put my spirit upon you in a strong way. And I want you guys to just feel free to just minister. And um, if the worship team can just lead us in a song. Oh, I just have a word for this young man. What's your name? Sami. I, I felt like the Lord was saying that some of the rejections that you experienced in your childhood was necessary to make you who you are and you've not even arrived. God is going to take you places, young man. He's going to take you places. He says those rejections were necessary because it has strengthened you. And God says when I see you, when the enemy sees you, he sees scars and he sees, you know, things that he has done. But God says when I see you, I see trophies. I see those things because you have overcome. And God says, I am raising, I'm enlarging the platform. And God says, he's going to bring some opportunities along your way. There is a spirit of sonship upon you. We all have the spirit of sonship. But I feel like God is saying, there is a spirit of sonship and faithfulness that is upon you. That even as you grow older, there'll be many sons that will be drawn to you because of your faithfulness as a son. Hallelujah. Let's, let's do some worship and I'm going to I know that God has words our, our situation through you guys I want you guys to feel free to just minister to let you minister but just now in my heart and spirit I just want to do one thing get all those young people the youth come on to my left and the rest keep moving the center and onto the right side I believe that God has us had something in store for you but I'm going to reach to the rest of the church just now I want you to I want to reach to you just now because somewhere you're still standing back. You're standing back. But I hope you heard what, what Pastor Sheila said. I'm asking you today in Jesus' name. I'm asking you by the witness of the Holy Spirit. How many of you have seen a trickle? You've seen a trickle. You've asked God. You've prayed. And you've seen the trickle in your life. Maybe you're standing there and saying, I have not yet laid hands and seen the, 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 the cancers gone. I have not yet laid hands and I have not seen demons running away. And I have not yet laid hands and seen people shifted in business. How many of you have seen trickles? Listen, the Holy Spirit is not asking you. Are you seeing a gush? The Holy Spirit is saying today, if you have seen a trickle and you are willing and you are surrendering and you are willing to say, take me, then the Holy Spirit will use you as you take the trickle and begin to release it. And then the ankle high will come slowly. You see, you and I most times want to jump from A to Z. And we want God to prove that He can use us by doing something absolutely spectacular. But the Word of God says He's so gentle. He's so gentle. He will not flood you with water you cannot take. It'll come with a trickle. And you were told somebody, I prayed this small prayer and God answered it. And inside I saw a gate inside of me. I saw heaven inside of me. I saw a Holy Spirit inside of me. I saw the Shekinah glory covering over the small things. Have you seen small things? No, God is asking you, my son, my daughter, will you be willing to step out for the ankle high and the knee high and the waist high? And will you come to the place where you can say, the river, I no longer have control over the river. The river has control over me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give him a clap offering somewhere. And I'm asking you, 
I'm asking you today, will you step out of your place? We will make the altar bigger. We'll make the altar bigger because you're bringing the trickle and you're saying, God, take my little trickle. And you're saying somebody's been, been up to the knees and you've been praying. And God says, I'm taken up to the waist. And somebody's been up to the waist. And he's going to take it up to the chest. And somebody's been up to the chest. And God's going to take it into a river of flood. A flood of his presence is coming. A flood of his presence is coming. You know, I read that text and I'm looking at two parts. Your belly. Put your hand on your belly. Pastor Sheila said, do that. Your belly has a river of living water. And in those words, there's a verse of scripture that says if it flows, it will become a river. But if it doesn't flow, it will become a swamp. Have you heard? Did you hear what I said, church? Did you hear what I said? If it flows out of your belly, even the trickle will become a large river. But if it stays inside your belly, it will change you into a swamp. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Listen to these words. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask someone to read these words over you. And if that's your desire, just come to the front. We want to pack. Push all the chairs back. This, don't worry about the chaos or confusion. You're saying, God, I'm bringing my trickle. I'm bringing my ankle high water. I'm bringing my knee deep water. I've been knee deep for the last 20 years. I've been in the church. I've been waist deep for the last 50 years. I still don't know what it is to raise the dead. I still don't know what it is to see God working in signs and wonders. Just open your mouth. Don't go and listen to what the word of God says. I'm giving this mic to Pastor Shane and, and Steve and Brittany after that to activate, to activate that presence. But will you come to that presence just now? It says, then he led me to the bank. When I arrived, I saw a great number of trees on either side of the river. I want you to picture yourself just now. This is what God has for you. I saw a great number of trees. Put your hand on your heart as I read this passage. Because the devil's made you content with small things. And you're telling him just now, I am going to break out of your vision over my life. I don't want your vision over my life. I don't want your vision. You will not try to impress me with something that looks nice but is false, is a lie of the devil and I strip out lies of the devil just now. Put your hand on your heart that you receive this vision just now. And he said to me, the water flows to the eastern region and goes down to a rubber where it enters the Dead Sea, where it empties into the sea. The salty water becomes fresh. Say, I am an influencer. It's time to stop getting influenced. It's time to become an influencer. Say, I'm an influencer. It swarms with living creatures and will live wherever the river flows. Say, I, my life will swarm with life. My life will swarm with life. Not with possessions. Hallelujah. Get the lie of the devil out. Because he makes you feel big and very big in your possessions. So you got a house and you got a car and you got this and you got that job and you got that salary. Nonsense. That is dust that's going down to the grave. You leave it behind. May you be, may you be rich with life. May you be rich with life. Listen what it says just now. There will be a large number of fish because this water flows there and makes the salt water fresh. So the river flows. Everything will live. Say everything will live. Listen, people will fish along the shores. The fish will be of many kinds. Say many kinds this morning. Like the fish of the Mediterranean Sea. But the swamps and marshes will not become fresh. Verse 12. 
fruit trees of all kinds will grow. Say all kinds. Would you like to see that? I, I detest so much of the selfish prosperity gospel because it makes you rich and continues to keep others poor. But when you come into this river, not only you will be rich, others in your territory will become rich. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All kinds will grow on both banks. Their leaves will not wither. Say, my leaves will not wither. Their fruit will not fail. Every month they will bear fruit because the water from the sanctuary flows to them. Say, the water of the sanctuary flows to me. Hallelujah. And it's going to flow out of you. It's ready to burst, beloved. It's ready to burst. Their fruit will be served for food. Say, my fruit will be served for food. And listen to the last one. Their leaves will be served for healing. Come on, come on. Somebody shout a hallelujah there. Do you know when the river flows, you will bear leaves. And the trees that come out of you, they will bear leaves. And the leaves will be served for... 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 Do you believe that just now? Is that in your Bible just now? Is that something you're ready to activate just now? Are you saying enough, enough? My spirituality doesn't touch anybody. Doesn't touch anybody, Pastor. In fact, whenever I have a problem, I'm looking for someone else to fix it. I'm looking for someone else to fix it. When I want my business to grow, I'm looking for someone else to fix it. When I want my child to be changed, I'm looking for some other counselor. When I'm looking for, some, for, for something else in my home, I'm looking for the bank guy. I'm looking for the guy in the office. God, Pastor, I'm sick of this type of Christianity. I want the type of spirituality in which not just me, but others are getting fixed. Hallelujah. My leaves will bring healing to others. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Begin to trust the Lord just now. Begin to trust the Lord and come forward. Come forward. We're going to pray. We're going to pray because you're saying, I'm bringing my trickle. I'm bringing my trickle to the front. God, you're going to take it this morning and you're going to turn it into a bursting river. Stephen, Pastor Shane and Brittany, just take this mic and lead us. Just begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. Come on, begin to lift your voice. Begin to lift your voice. Come on, begin to lift your voice. This is a sovereign day in the day of this church. Begin to lift your voice. Begin to lift your voice. Begin to lift your voice to the Lord. Come on. Those of you in the back, begin to lift your voice. Begin to lift your voice. The Lord says this church is due for promotion. It's time for promotion. Come on, lift your voice. Come on, begin to pray. Spirit of God's coming on many of you right now. Begin to look to the Lord. Come on, begin to press. Come on, press, press, press. You're doing good. Come on. There's a river, river coming in this church, a river coming in this church. Dreams and visions coming. There will be apostolic teams that leave this church. They will say, send us a team from Bangalore. Send us an apostolic team. You will lay hands upon the sick. You will prophesy. There'll be teams going out. You'll operate under the anointing. You'll change atmospheres wherever you go. There will come a day in this church when the glory will be so strong, the worshipers will have to stop ministering. The cloud is coming to this church. The glory cloud is coming. I tell you by the word of the Lord, the glory cloud is coming to this church. Just, just close your eyes, come on. 
just just begin to look at the Lord one on one begin to look come on begin to look one on one the Lord is pouring down anointings he's pouring down anointings it's coming from the head he's pouring down anointings he's touching some Connie's kind of, touching many of you already feel the spirit on you begin to open up just like a funnel and let him go all the way in he's changing something he's changing your DNA He's changing your desires. Something's shifting. Something is shifting. Something is shifting. Don't look at the stage. Don't look at me. Begin to look at the Lord. Begin to pull. Come on. Come on. Begin to pull. There's an anointing here waiting. That's it. That's it. That's it. Come on. You're going to feel the atmosphere go up a few more degrees. Come on. Everyone's praying. Everyone's praying. This church is being promoted. This church is being promoted the Lord says I have looked I found a house I have found a house of prayer I'm gonna promote many of you in business are gonna get ideas for business creative ideas are coming to you many of you the Lord can begin to wake up and give you ideas for business and the Lord's gonna allow lots of money to go through your hands and you're gonna sow it back into the kingdom lift your hands if you're in business right now and say father I open my heart to receive fresh revelation that you'll give me ideas that I'll be able to plant the proceeds of that into the kingdom no one's gonna lay hands on you no one's gonna lay hands this is, you're going one-on-one -on -one. there is some things you can't get from someone laying hands on you this is not the day for us to lay hands on you. This is the day for you to begin to receive from heaven the anointing. You've been prepared for this. You've been born for this. For such a time as this, come on. No one's going to lay hands on you. The Lord is saying, grow up. It's time to grow up. It's time to grow up where you learn how to lay hold of God and pull down that anointing upon you. The Spirit of God is falling on many of you right now. He's falling on many of you right now. You're doing fantastic. You're doing good. Keep going. Come on. Learn to go the distance. Learn to pray more than a few minutes in tongues. Learn to pray until the atmosphere shifts over you. Learn to pray until the atmosphere shifts over you. Learn. Come on. You're doing wonderful. You're doing wonderful. Keep going. Don't look at the stage. Do not look at the stage. Pull. Pull. Soraranamaka. And everywhere the river went, there's healing. The Lord is touching. He's touching. He's confirming some things today. He's confirming some callings today. Talk to the Lord. Talk to him. Come on. Something's about to happen in here. Keep talking. No one's going to lay hands on you today. This is not the day of one man laying hands on you. Get a hold of God yourself. Get a hold of God for yourself. He says, I'm taking you to another level. I'm causing you to grow up, to grow up into the fullness of Christ, where you begin to do the works of Christ. Because they're coming. They're coming. They're coming. The harvest is coming to this church. Everybody close your eyes. Just focus on the Lord right now. Everybody close your eyes. Don't look at another person. Just close your eyes and say, Holy Spirit, come. Everybody say that. Say, Holy Spirit, come. Say, touch me. He's beginning to move on people right now. Don't open your eyes. Don't look around. Holy Spirit, come in this place and begin touching every person right where they're at. Even as I'm saying, Holy Spirit, touch every person. I want you to grab a hold of that by faith and just expect that the Spirit of God is moving on you right now. Holy Spirit, move in this place. Touch every person here right where they're standing, right where they're sitting. Touch right now over here. Touch. Begin moving through this audience right now, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we ask you to begin moving on the hearts of these people, touching them deep. Yeah, deep, deep, deep. This service has just shifted. This is not a typical Sunday morning service. The Holy Spirit is coming in power and manifestation. 
Just begin to let him move on you as he wills. Keep your eyes closed. We're not looking at other people. We're not looking at the stage. We're not looking at pastor. We're not distracted by noises. Holy Spirit, move among your people. Up in the balcony, Holy Spirit, begin to touch the hearts of the people. They're hungry in the balcony. They're hungry in the balcony. Just begin to entreat the Holy Spirit and say, touch me, Lord. Touch me by your spirit. Touch me in the innermost parts of my being. Right now, a baptism of fire is coming on this section right here. A baptism of fire is coming. Just begin crying out and say, Holy Spirit, fill me. Fill me. Fill me like never before. Fill me like never before. Fill me like never before. Right where you're sitting, just begin to say, touch me, Lord. Fill me with the fresh baptism of your spirit. Fill me with the fresh baptism of your spirit. We can try a lot of things in the flesh, but when the spirit comes in and fills you, but when the spirit himself fills you, the word this morning was you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So begin to invite him in in a fresh new way. Holy Spirit, we're asking to touch your people this morning. Begin to touch your people this morning. Right where you're sitting. It doesn't matter if you're standing or sitting, man or woman, boy or girl, rich, poor, educated, uneducated. The Holy Spirit is looking for vessels and he will fill everyone. Keep your eyes on him. Don't look at me. Close your eyes. Look at him. He's looking for vessels and he will fill everyone. Yeah. Stay with it right here. He's still moving. He's still moving. He's still moving. He's looking for hearts that he can fill. Touch your people, Lord. Touch your people. Fill them fresh. Fill them fresh. Some of you, it's been a long, hot, weary road since you have had a touch of the presence of God and felt the infilling. And the Holy Spirit wants to touch you right now. From your place of dryness, from your place of desperation, from your place of loneliness, just begin to ask Him to touch you and to fill you right now. It's okay if your emotions, tears will flow. Emotions will rise up. He made you an emotional being. That is who you are. That is part of what he created in you. It's okay. We're focused on him right now. As the spirit of the living God is touching his people this morning. Some of you have felt completely abandoned. And the Lord says, I'm with you. I never leave you. I will never, ever forsake you. Holy Spirit, we ask you to continue touching your people. These are your people, Lord. These are your inheritance, Lord. Stay right here in this place with the Lord. Just stay right here in this place. This weekend has been a marking point for this church. And I don't care whether you came here as a visitor today, whether you came to the conference or not, whether you regularly attend this church, you're here and this is a marking point. 
This whole church, everyone here has come into a crossing over point this weekend. There's been a shift taking place in this part of the body of Christ today. This weekend, we've, we've, we've sat under some incredible teaching and some just incredible times of encounter with the Lord, both this morning and through this weekend. And I'm telling you, this whole body is stepping into a shifting place. We're crossing all the way over. Just like when the Israelites came to the Jordan and the Lord said, have the priests go first. We're going to step in. We're going to stand there with the Ark of the Covenant and the whole country of Israel is going to cross over. There's not one person in this room that God's not ready to help you cross all the way across the river today. So as you're standing here with the Lord, just continue to soak in his presence. Continue to be aware of his presence with you, one-on-one -on -one with him. But for some of you, there's still places in your heart where it's just been, there's just things that you're, have held you back in the past. So if there's anything that, if you're at this point this morning and you, ha, you have come to a place where there, there's anything in you that just feels like I'm still feeling held back or I'm still worried about this one thing, I want you to, to capture that in your mind right now and I want you to imagine putting it in your hands. If it's one thing, if it's two things, three things, whatever it is, Anything that's still holding you back, any doubts, any worries, any fears, any broken relationships. I want you to just picture yourself holding that in your hands right now. And as Jesus is standing in front of you, I want you to take your hands and hand it into his. Because he says, my son and my daughter, that's not your burden anymore. I'm taking it. That's not your burden anymore. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. And where we're going, you can't bring that with you. It's not that he's ignoring that or that it's not important. But he wants hold of it. So as you give that into his hands, know that he's crossing us over as a church into a new season. It's a new season, and you're going to cross all the way over. I know we're kind of packed in here, and you may be pretty close to the people around you, but I want you, even however small it is, I want you to, to make a prophetic act right now. I'm going to count to three, and when I say three, we're going to take a step forward with both feet because you're crossing all the way over. You're going all the way across the Jordan today. Are you ready? One, two, three. We're crossing all the way over. Take a step forward. And as you're standing here with the Lord, I want you to still just be in that one-on-one -on -one place with him. Keep your eyes closed. You're still in that one-on-one -on -one place with him. And as he's standing before you, you just gave him some burdens before you crossed over. He now has something he wants to give you. Hold your hands out in that place of receiving. He's giving you a key. He's giving you keys for walking into this new season. These keys are truth that he's speaking to your heart. And they're also very practical. And for some of you, he's going to speak a word of truth that you just really need to hear right now. As he tells you how he sees you, as he reminds you of what he's called you to, let that truth come and soak into your heart. And then when you go home today, find a place where you can write it down because that's going to become your declaration in this season. For others of you, you're going to hear him highlight a book of the Bible to you. And that's a place where he's calling you to camp out with him in this season because there's truths in that portion of the word that you need to grab hold of because they're going to walk you through this season. What book of the Bible is he putting on your heart today? For others of you, he's going to highlight a certain time of day that you need to set your face toward him. In the book of Daniel it talks about how Daniel set his face toward the Lord three times a day. For some of you, he's going to highlight a specific hour of the day, and he says, I want that hour. 
And you need, to, you need to make an alarm in your phone today. Pastor Gavin was talking about this this morning in the, in the Tamil service. You need to set an alarm in your phone today that's going to go off every day and say, that's my appointment with God. Because you need to have that appointment with him every time, every day, so that you can get your strategies for the day. Because you've all just crossed over into a new season. But you're going to need that strategy. You're going to need to hear the voice of the Lord every day in this new season to get you to walk through. Because there's purpose at the other end. There's people waiting in your city that are waiting to hear the voice of the Lord. There's people waiting for the revival that's about to break out. But as his army, we've got to know his strategy in this season. Amen. So Lord, I thank you, Jesus. God, we thank you for what you're doing in our midst this morning. God, we thank you for taking burdens from the past. We thank you for walking us all the way through the Jordan into the other side, into the promises that you've put on our hearts. And we thank you for the new strategies, God. We thank you, Lord. Just keep your eyes closed before the Lord right now. Just need to do this. If you're a musician or a songwriter or a singer, just raise your hands. Keep your eyes closed. If you're a musician, even if you're not in the worship team, but you're a musician, or just raise your hands high. Lift them to the Lord as an offering. The Lord says there's a new sound coming to this church. There's a new sound. The Lord's going to enable you to capture the sound because every movement has a sound. It has songs. And the Lord says, I'm going to release a sound of revival, and you're going to catch it. You're going to write songs. There will be songs that will be written from this house that will be sung in other places. You're going to hear notes, and you're going to hear melodies. You're going to hear refrains, and you're going to put those to paper or into digital form, and the Lord is going to anoint. Now, Father, I thank you right now. Your spirit is falling on musicians right now. You're just going one-on-one -on -one right now. You're receiving an anointing to hear. But that's going to require that you're in a place where you can hear him. So what Brittany was saying earlier about making the appointment with God is not going to come while you're busy doing five different things. It's going to come by consecrated time with the Lord. Keep your arms before the Lord. So, Father, let your anointing fall. Let your anointing fall. Don't even pray right now. Just receive. You're just receiving. Father, let your glory. He's just coming very gently. Just let your glory fall. Let your glory rest more. Lord, let your glory rest, the, create, the creative ideas, the creative melodies. Let them hear the songs of heaven. Let them write the songs of heaven. Let them understand the songs of heaven, Lord. And let the songs that are written here, Lord, be a blessing in this move of your spirit. Just keep receiving from the Lord right now, Lord. It's a sovereign day in this house. Just thank you for the sound, the sound the sound. Don't struggle, don't strain. It's such a beautiful moment. I'm asking you to really smile from your lips and deep in your heart. Where God's taking you is not some place of terror. There's deep joy. Deep joy. Don't, don't, you don't need to strain anything just now. Just let the river take you. Let the river take you. Can you lift that volume and play it right from the beginning? And I want you to look at those words and just, and just, and just let this be a beautiful moment from the start, from the beginning, please. I just want you to listen to the song and just move with it. Let this be a beautiful moment, church. Following Jesus, raising the dead, driving the demons, enjoying your life and fruitfulness is not something of, you eat, devil makes you think it's something, ooh, something mystical. It's pure joy. It's pure joy. Listen to the words and let this become your prayer right now. Some of you may not know it, but let it flow just now. Just let it flow right now. Jesus, just just let the, make this words your prayer and say it lightly. 
I've come to this place in my life. I'm full, but I'm not satisfied. This longing to have more of you, God, not just the trickle, the flood. I can feel in my heart. My heart's convinced this morning. I'm thirsty. My soul can't be quenched. You already know this, but still, come do whatever you want me to. I'm standing knee deep, but I'm out where I've never been. And I feel you coming, and I hear your voice on the wind. Pray, pray. Dance with it. Would you come and tear down the boxes that I've tried to put you in? Let love come teach me who you are again. Back to the place where my heart was only about you, and all that I wanted was just to be with you, God. Come do whatever. Come do whatever you want me to. Just give yourself in joyful surrender, and further and further. My heart moves away from the shore into deeper waters. Whatever it looks like, whatever may come, Lord, I am yours. And further and further my heart moves away from the shore. Let the Spirit move you deeper just now. Deeper just now. Enjoy it, church. Whatever it looks like, Lord, whatever may come, I am yours. And you crush over me. I've lost control, but I'm free. I'm going. 